Hi everybody, uh, my name is Sarah Newman and I'm here at the Paper Artsy booth. Um, I am one of several designers here for Paper Artsy and I'm going to be showing you some of my new stamps, some of my new stencils. We'll be playing with some of the fresco finished chalk acrylic paints from Paper Artsy and I'm even going to work in some embossing powders from WOW. So let's take a look. I'm going to start with some of the smoothie cardstock. This is from Paper Artsy. If you could touch it, you would be able to feel that it's just beautifully smooth. It's a wonderful surface for working with just about any medium, but definitely with the fresco finish chalk acrylic paints. So the thing with these, and probably some of you will notice, that underneath the color, you've got a little swatch on here, and this will show you whether it is a semi-opaque, as you can see on here, or if it is a translucent like you can see here with the chartreuse or if it's an opaque like the sargasso so you've got lots of different versions of your paint in addition to all of these gorgeous gorgeous colors so we've got them all in a beautiful palette for you already of course you can do your own mixing and matching um, you can blend your own unique colors if you want to but if you're new to painting or if maybe this is something a bit um, tricky for you and then we've got colors already mixed up for you so I'm gonna start out let's see I'm gonna start out with the vanilla and this is an opaque color this is one of those colors that it's just great to have on hand because it gives you a really good way to kind of knock back the white because white can be kind of intimidating so I'm gonna use my paper artsy brayer for this I've just got a little bit of paint on my craft sheet and I'm gonna roll it around on my brayer. So you can see I've got the brayer pretty much completely colored, covered. And then I'm just going to put this down on here. I'm not gonna worry about having it too perfect. I don't need to get complete coverage on there. I'm just gonna knock out a little bit of color. Then I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add some of the Sargasso on here. Let's give this a go and see how this will turn out. Add a little bit more here on my craft sheet and if I want to I can kind of speed up the dry time with a heat tool it dries really quickly and of course because I'm applying it with a brayer it will also dry even more quickly too but you can see that this is pretty much ready to do some additional work on I'm not going to worry about cleaning my brayer or my work surface but let's just add some patches in here as well so we're doing opposite corners, just kind of adding some of that color on there. And I'm gonna heat set this as well. So I've got two of my opaque colors, and now I want to add in a translucent. So let me find one. I'm gonna grab the chartreuse and we'll, we'll see what this color combo is gonna look like. So get this nicely heat set. So again, I'm ready to go. So. I'll use a little bit of the chartreuse, add this to my fairly inky surface, mm -hmm. and I'm going to add in a little bit of water. And I'll put the water sort of next to that puddle so that I can get a bit more of a watery wash of this. So although they're great straight out of the bottle, you can, you know, do some of your own mixing and matching. And I'm just going to be adding a bit of a glow and the chartreuse is great for this there's another color called dirty lime which is a wonderful color by Tracy Scott and that's another great one that can create a really lovely glow so I'm just kind of finger painting this in here I'm overlapping some of the layers and some of the areas I'm just gonna clean this off Pop down a little bit more water, and we can also just brayer some of this on. So now at this point, I've got some definite blocks of color. I've got some overlapping colors. I'm going to heat set this a little bit more. And then I'm going to add some stenciling on here. So I've got three stencils, new ones this year. And hopefully you can see this. This is, um, the three of them are all 
part of the the new range that I've got which has a bit of a French twist to it and you'll see it when I show you the stamps but this is um, a photograph that I took of the sidewalk in oh, Paris wow. uh -huh. so when then kind of played around with a little bit and it ends up kind of a lattice effect or the main point of it is that you've got a really nice solid grid area you've also got some big plastic pieces on here which you can do some reverse stenciling so that's one of them another one here which is circles which makes me think of the when you put your coffee cup down and you're a french cafe and you end up with that circle of of coffee on there that's the other one and then we've also got i'm calling it the french collage it's um, some words, it's parts and pieces, it's little bits of um, leaves and things like that in there as well. So a bit more of an all over pattern there. So I've got my, my piece ready to go and I'm just gonna add a little bit of stenciling on here. I'm gonna grab that circles stencil. And I'm gonna pop this down and then let me get more of my vanilla. I'm gonna come back with that vanilla. And I'm gonna use my finger, actually. You can use a piece of cut and dry. I like to use my finger, I get a little bit more control. And I'm just gonna hold this down and add in some of that paint going through here. I'm not gonna worry about doing the whole thing although you certainly can. But I like to use just portions of a stencil and I find that that gives you just little hints. So I don't have to have it all over, I just have little bits and bobs in there. While this is still wet and it is a little bit blobby, I'm gonna come in with some embossing powder. So I've got three from WOW. It's the newest trio that I've done with them called Parc Floral, which goes along with the French theme of my stamps and stencils. So I've got the Azalea, Sunflower, and Hydrangea. And I'm gonna use that Sunflower. So I'm just gonna add a little bit in here. I'm not, I'm not trying to cover the whole thing. We're just gonna add a little bit. Grab a paper towel. and just tap off some of the excess in here. And that's going to give me just a little bit more texture and definition on here. Mm -hmm. We're not going for perfect, which is kind of the fun part of it. So I'm just going to heat set this. Great tip to actually use the wet paint instead of uh, yeah. uh, ink. So yeah, you can use you can use water, you can use embossing ink, you can use the um, Wow Rolly tool. They've got a really cool Rolly tool that's um, supposed to be the embossing ink pad like conditioner, but you can use it for other stuff too. <laughs> and you can use, of course, an embossing pen as well. Actually, should we try some water? Do you want to do some water with embossing? Yeah, you want me? Let me show you that. Yeah. Let me, I'll add some stamping on here. Let me see if I can funnel this back in. This will be my challenge for the morning. We'll call it good. <laughs> and yeah, I'm going to add some stamping on here and then we'll do some water embossing. So the stamp sets that I have from Paper Artsy, here is one that I'm going to start pulling some stamps from. So this has a very definite Parisian theme, as you can see. You might recognize the metro sign. Um, we've also got branches and music and little bits of text and quotes. And then we've also got a really versatile botanical. And again, combining some of the French elements, some of that French text. And as always, sentiments so that you've got something if you're doing card making. So I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab this one. That's the that one is great. I love this I one. My favorite. Is it? I really like it too. And at first, when I designed it, because it's um, it's a postmark, and I had it, you know, it's quite small. And I thought, oh, maybe I should just leave it the size that it is. And then I enlarged it and I thought, no, I actually am really liking this, just yeah. having it big. So it can be really big and bold. Because it's a nice big size, if you don't have a block, you can just 
stamp it like it is. Pop that down. And let's see. Maybe I'll grab a block for this one. And I like how the black is really, this is the VersaFine Claire. It's really popping up against the bright colors that we've got going on here. And you can even stamp to overlap some of that embossed area. So this is where I've got, well, let's do it over here. I've got the paint and I've got the embossing, melted embossing powder. So let's see how this will look on top. So then you've got instantly, you've got another layer on there as well. So again, I'll just give it a little bit of a speed up with the dry. Now I could use embossing powder on top of that. And that's what I've done. I think you can see with this blue one here, that's actually been stamped with, um, with VersaFine. And then with the embossing powder, just dumped right on top of it. So now that you've got this, let's do some water embossing. So let me choose another one of the colors. Maybe I'll try. Ooh, let's go with the let's go with the azalea. So I'm gonna get some water on my hands. Ooh, a little water bucket here. I'm gonna get a bit messy. So I've got it on my hands, and I'm flicking it on here. And then. I'm going to take that azalea and dump it on top. Yeah, yeah, cool, huh? So let me, let me, it's amazing how, no matter how big your work surface is, it always becomes like the tiniest area ever when you're working. But, you know, very important step in the embossing process, make sure your lid is on before you turn on your heat tool. <laughs> Just saying. And with my embossing powders, they're all a variegated collection of various colors within one jar. So as this is starting to melt, you're gonna be able to see that there's some red, there's some blue. With these ones, I always like to mix in some um, metallic so you'll either have like a pearl metallic you'll have a gold or you'll have a silver but just to add an extra element of shine on there and I think you can see as it's melting that the random pattern of that water flicking is really nice if I was doing just a little bit I would probably want to heat set from underneath just to make sure that the embossing powder doesn't blow back at me. And there we've got within, I don't know how long we've been going Raquel, but not very long. You're able to get 10 minutes. You've got that beautiful Sargasso. You've got that beautiful um, vanilla that we were working with. And then also don't forget the glow of the chartreuse. So that's just added instantly these three colors instantly added um, a background really taking away from just that plain white cardstock and because i'm using the smoothie cardstock it's a nice sturdy weight of cardstock so it's going to handle the abuse that i'm throwing at it and then i can put my stamping on there i can do my stencil embossing i can do my water embossing if i was making a card with this all i would need to do is add maybe a quote or a sentiment on there, pop it on the front of a card, and I've got something that's pretty cool and ready to go. Now I used a lot of the same colors for this piece here, minus the Sargasso, so you can see just how different the effects can be. So lots and lots of different creative possibilities when you're working with paint, when you're working with stamps and stencils and embossing powder, all of the fantastic things that Paper Artsy gives us to play with. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you very much. See you soon. Bye-bye.